Hello, uh, I'm Paul Sweeney. I am the head of product at Webio. I am not Anne Marie O'Grady, but I thank Anne Marie for helping me with this presentation. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today, more of a chat, less of a kind of formal presentation. I think the mode that we're in today is uh, much more conducive to that. So I'm going to talk to you like a one-to-one -one conversation, um, which is maybe the benefit of what we're doing at the moment. And so my thesis today is, I think that digital messaging needs to be more than social messaging. Um, there's a huge opportunity out there, and I'd like to explore that today. So at the moment, what we're seeing is we're seeing a huge leap forward a digital in digital. Um, it's six years and six months, six weeks. Uh, that has also led to a huge increase in the amount of messaging that's being used globally and you know, at every level. I have this little thesis I'm calling the predictive text horizon, which I'll explain when we get to it, but I think it's like this ring that's going to be formed around companies and their customer service and raise the issue of owned versus bought uh, media. And maybe messaging is the kind of the future of programmable services and programmable enterprises. So jumping straight in, digital culture, what's going on? Well, everything is changing around us with the pandemic. Uh, we're using messaging and social to stay in contact with one another as it was designed for, and it's helping. People are feeling less lonely. It's connecting people as it should. And an interesting thing is we're feeling under less pressure to kind of supply a generated or fake version of ourselves. It's very hard to maintain that when you're on a Zoom call and your kid walks in or your dog jumps up or your budgie goes crazy or whatever. So we're under less pressure to put up kind of this facade. And that's an interesting trend. Men are much more open to speaking about their mental health issues because we have to. Um, we're all in this together. There's a, a shared experience. We're all under pressure. So why not talk about it? Again, being more open. And we're messaging more than we ever have before. We're messaging others. We're messaging friends we haven't spoken with in years. And we're doing this on a scale that's kind of almost unprecedented. Uh, there's been a leap forward in messaging use globally. And we're not just using messengers, we're also using Facebook groups. So we're joining special interest groups, but we're also much more active on our local street-based groups. So the little groups we have on our WhatsApp that keep us connected to the local sports team, the neighborhood um, interest group, the neighborhood watch group, where we're asking questions all the time in these media. So more and more we're using these media to stay in contact with one another. And while we're talking a lot these days about the Zoom culture and video calls, and that's a big change for everyone, it's very visible. Look at what happened with text messaging there. Huge leap forward with the, with the use of text messaging, 43% leap, massive. Um, the amount of uh, email, still using email, still using social media, still using voice calls, everything up across the board. Um, and this trend is likely to continue into the future with some changes per demographic, but messaging and social is just getting more and more important. Even in the communications with companies, um, and often uh, it's kind of getting more, more understood, but 15% of people use it monthly now, that's a fairly big jump. Um, and over 60% of people have used the messaging apps to contact companies in the last three months. And there's over 20 billion messages a month between companies and customers now. And that's just going to keep on going up. And I can tell you from just the uh, conversations I've had and presentations I've been in over the last month, we're going to see this absolute surge in the use of WhatsApp messaging in 2021. It has just been so powerful for enterprises to uh, manage the inbound traffic to their contact centers. It's just too good to leave behind. And that's going to be, the, that's going to be part of the future challenge for, for everyone. So the pandemic has also seen us shift our behaviors in other ways. We've had to change the way we buy things. 40% of us have switched 
are from a regular business provider. Now, if you think about the, the kind of scale of spending that marketers put in place to move spending behaviors by percentage points, this pandemic has shifted 40%. And over 60% have used digital and messaging tools to discover these new local providers. And why are they switching? Well, they're more local, so we're locked into our houses. We can get to these providers, but also we want to find better value and we want to support local businesses. They're the places we go to to get our coffee, buy our bread, and pick up our off-license beer, the last one in particular. So if there's anyone benefiting from the switch, I mean, I know the huge platforms like Amazon are benefiting hugely, but largely for reasons I'll go into in a while. Um, but we need to get better at making these local connections and enabling them over messengers too. And there's, there's good business to be done there. But by far, the people, uh, the highest level of people impacted are those whose income is uncertain. Um, where there is income uncertainty, we are 300% more likely to look for another service provider. So there's clear geographic and demographic impacts here in terms of who is affected by this. So it's not just the fact that we're going local to buy things. When we use an app or a messenger to connect with that local supermarket, we're collecting um, at a particular time. We're specifying particular products. We might be specifying other things that we would like in this uh, like fresh bread as opposed to something else and or picked up from the curb as opposed to the front but we are in a way using this messenger to get a service that we can configure on demand and it is also the way that we work now so we access our services we access the crm we access account software online we work maybe in time frames that are our time frames we're doing a bit of time shifting now as well, like recording video for other people later on. So the nature of work and work from home is becoming almost another programmable enterprise. It is a digital enterprise. And if you look at companies um, in, a, in the high tech space, like a lot of them are saying, hey, from here on, if you want to work from home, that's fine with us. Some of these companies are saying that up to 50% of their employees want to work from home from here on in. And Portugal has just said, it is your right as a citizen to be able to work from home if, if you would like to, and if the work lends itself to that possibility. So we're in the middle of this huge shift in the nature of work. And we're also in the middle of shift in terms of um, what we used to go out to do. So the example here is the gym. So we'd go out to the gym, uh, we'd, we'd uh, meet people, we'd be enthused and we'd use the equipment there. But what if we bring the gym into the home and we have an IoT device, very smart device, this Peloton bike. We have smart watches to uh, monitor our own biometrics, of breathing, uh, heart rate, uh, water loss, etc. We have a, a TV or a screen streaming in and an instructor. But we're doing it at a time when we want to do it, when we can do it. Maybe it's not the same instructor today. Maybe we have a favorite instructor somewhere else. Maybe we want to join a class somewhere else. Again, it is a programmable service. It is a programmable enterprise, and it's using a combination of different elements to make that happen. And I think these are huge shifts that are happening right in front of us. So I'd just like to use this phrase, the predictive text horizon. You know when you are uh, typing away and it suggests a word to you and you just use that word and move to the next word. Well, on the other side of that, there's a person who's also predictive texting back to you. You're both being kind of not, you know, constrained in the language that you're using in how it's being crafted by the device that you're using. Well, if language is a kind of horizon in that respect, the messengers and the not just the spelling, but the access rights, the what you can share, when you can share, all these parameters. These are all baked into these messaging platforms now. So how we communicate with each other, but how we communicate with companies and they are allowed to communicate with us is also going to be a part of this 
uh, social messenger horizon. And they have rules. So who owns the brand? So you're a retailer. Where does your brand sit? Who owns that brand validation? Who owns the customer's ID? How are we allowed to contact these people? What times, under what conditions, for what reasons? What templates can we use to do this? What gateways are we allowed to use? How are we allowed to pay? Can we thread these channels or these future channels into other conversations from email and from voice channels? And can we bring our own employees into this conversation? Well, at the moment, we can do a lot of this, but in a fairly restricted way, especially if you look at WhatsApp, it's very restrictive. Now, if you look at a company like Booking.com, they used to spend 10 billion a year on Google Ads. It was how they drove revenue to their business, but it was a tax. It was a customer acquisition tax, and they've just canceled. They don't want to pay that tax anymore. And I think this is a similar kind of area that we are in danger of getting into unless we build a fuller vision of how we want to interact with customers in the future. So if you're in an inbound, uh, if, you, if you're creating an inbound channel, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Alexa, Google Home, these are all great platforms. They're very powerful and they get great results. We know we're delivering these today. They get really good results. But you have to blend them with channels that you have more control over, like email, chat, your regular voice, browser-based services. And I think that people aren't giving this enough attention at the enterprise level as to what balance of these they want to have and exactly where they play. You are going to have to have outbound over WhatsApp and the messenger channels, no doubt about it. But you're also going to have to blend that into your email, chat, your mobile apps, and RCS. Now, while RCS has had a pretty poor reputation, um, the services in it offer a real opportunity for the industry. When uh, combined with other browser-based technologies, I think something interesting could be done here. But in the meantime, the way we've been thinking about this at Webio is we think about this as conversation middleware. You need a platform, or we think enterprises need a platform to abstract themselves away from this and to be able to kind of get more control over what platforms they're using and how they're threaded together. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the next slide up here. Oh, that didn't help. So conversational experience is what we're trying to deliver here over whatever user interface, over whatever mobile device. And the kind of things that we need to take control of is authentication. Are you who you say you are? How, is, um, how are we able to bring in text and language processing and image processing into a conversation? A simple scan a document, see what's in the document, understand what the rule is for the next step. Has it all been filled out? Is it all authenticated? Is it all the detail that you want? Move on to the next step. So platforms like um, machine learning, uh, understanding intents, using APIs to connect to your own systems, and understanding the context of that conversation at any particular time, at any stage of the customer journey, that's for you to have a good uh, good control over and to do that in a way that's very guided, very precise and in a way that allows you to give both self-service and agent service into that conversation as cleanly as possible. And this is a, uh, I, I think when you step back and you look at the nature of how digital services are going to evolve, you're going to see that you're going to have to have some concept like this sitting on your enterprise platform. So regular conversational customer service, integrating with your FAQs and your knowledge base, it's very good for agent utilization and, and getting 
most out of those resources, especially with surge volumes. Being able to integrate it over API to bring in things like real-time balance, real-time delivery information, um, real-time product availability information. Being able to attach documents, pictures, videos, conversational forms so that you can gather information slickly. These are all the things that can be done. But when you stand back and think about the processes that you can do with those kinds of tools, you can do a whole identification process. You can put a customer or give them the opportunity to go through a budgeting process conversationally and to build a picture of what the real uh, payments picture is for them at the moment. Being programmatic about this, you can be much more flexible in how, when, where payments are made, payment schedules are arranged, how that's organized in terms of organizing for direct debits or credits. Um, and these are problems that we're going to see in 2021 just at a scale that we've never seen before. Um, and we've seen all this play out in conversational payments. And it's something that uh, is easy to overlook as a simple example of how you can use conversational messaging to make like large chunks of enterprise processes work more effectively. And we've done that over and over again. Instead of having someone, because we couldn't have someone going to the door to do a survey, it was done with conversational forms. No need to go to the door to survey the person. There was a 60% reduction in dialer activity because, well, if you couldn't, service those calls anyway. And there was a 300% increase in contact rates. And this is not extraordinary to us. We've seen this with other vendors doing similar things with uh, messengers and WhatsApps in customer service environments. So a 300% jump in, in contact rates is a massive impact for a business. So what is my thesis? Well, what I'm trying to say is, uh, digital messaging becomes programmable services when you look at things in the way I've just gone through. And that's a key future of work theme. It's not just about sending a text message. It's about an entire way you access and interact with digital services. And perhaps programmable CX shouldn't just give this away to the digital uh, social messengers. Maybe there is another way of getting more value here. And I think the conversational APIs are a part of this programmable future and a key theme for programmable CX. And I think identity and payments are critical processes for RCS to get right and for the industry to reclaim. And I think there's a lot of scope and a lot of revenue in there for everybody if the industry can get its hands around this. So whirlwind tour. Uh, I think what I really wanted to get across to everybody today and to you is there's never been a need, uh, more of a need for communications as there is today. The nature of services is socially changing around us and messengers, messaging is playing a key part in that future. We need to be very proactive about how we get involved in this. We need to think about how we blend this inbound and outbound channels, paid and um, owned channels and start building for that future today. So thank you for your time. I hope you've learned something from it. I've learned something from putting it together and hopefully as a, a TAD community, we'll all get to meet up in person soon 